Andy at Circle Precision Tool. Uh, our website is www.circleprecisiontool.com. Uh, we're going to make a series of videos on how to uh, go full circle on manufacturing a simple mechanical part. Uh, we're going to start with making a model uh, in Autodesk Inventor. Uh, we're going to uh, then make a technical drawing from that and then we're also going to generate uh, G-code and set up and run a milling machine. Uh, we're doing this to help people uh, sort of get started. Uh, you know, it's a little bit daunting. Uh, manufacturing has changed a lot. Uh, you know, the traditional methods are still quite valid. You know, walking up to a manual lathe or milling machine and, and milling parts. Uh, but a lot of times things are done a little bit differently in this day and age. Uh, and so we're going to try and demonstrate some of that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're going to fade in, we're going to get fade off, off of this and we're going to move to the computer screen and we're going to start with Autodesk Inventor and we're going to make a simple model. Okay, uh, this is Andy from Circle Precision Tool. Uh, we're making a series of short videos that uh, basically go full circle. They demonstrate um, how to model a part, uh, so you can put some shape to your idea, uh, how to generate some drawings from that model, how to generate toolpaths for a milling machine from that uh, model, and how to make assemblies from that model. Right now we're just going to start with, uh, this is sort of an introduction to Autodesk Inventor. There are a lot of different tools to make models with. Uh, I'm very comfortable with Inventor, so that's where I'm going to start since I'm not so comfortable with making videos. Um, this is the part we're going to make. Um, so this is just a sample little block. Uh, it holds an R8 bearing in the center here, and this is some bolt holes. Um, those are for number 10 screws. So we're going to close this up. We start by making a new project. Um, simple bearing block, you would say new, you want a single user, you go next, you create a, a, a path, uh, you create a name, and then a location uh, for your, um, and I put my stuff in libraries, documents, my documents, circle precision tool, um, demo video, so forth and so on. All right, I'm going to cancel out of this because uh, I've already made a few projects for this video, having made a few mistakes. Uh, but hopefully this one goes a little smoother. Um, so uh, that's how you make it. That's how you make a, uh, um, a project. I already have one made up here, which is what I'm going to pull from. I'm going to use that one. So we say done. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start something. So we go to the new and we're going to make a part. Um, this is a standard inventor part. It's dot IPT. And this is going to be a nice parametric model. Uh, so you, your inventor opens up a uh, quick tour. You've got um, all sorts of tools up here uh, to choose from. We'll use some of them, very few of them, actually. Um, over here on the side you have a browser and this is like a little map of, of your model. Um, it, getting comfortable with the browser is, is, is a good thing because it's, it's actually very useful. Um, uh, enabled to, it enables you to make changes, uh, especially when you have a fairly complicated part. It, 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 it enables you to keep a... Um, it gives you some memory basically. Uh, it allows you to keep a history of, of what you've done. And, you can move that history around a little bit, uh, so you can, can instead of redoing a whole part, you can sort of change it on the fly real easily. That's what modeling is all about. It's about being able to change your mind quickly. Um, so uh, we're going to start with making a new sketch. So I can go up here to the sketch uh, bit and click on that, or I can right click in space and click on the new sketch. Right click in space is almost always the right answer. Uh, when you don't know how to get to where you want to go, just go right click and near where you have your problem and you'll get there. So, um, this is the XY plane. I can grab that in a couple of places. I can grab it right here, or I can grab it right here. I click on that, my sketch goes on the, the XY plane. 
and we're going to just make the square that is the base of our barren flange and it's nice so I just put in a little rectangle box where I actually make a square um, and uh, two just tab over two and you're done and that's the end of your first sketch you say okay it's good to keep your sketches simple it's not as important nowadays as it was in the past uh, but if you keep your sketches simple um, it's easier on the software so uh, we click finish right click in space click on finish 2d sketch and we're done with the sketch we want to extrude we want to give this some thickness we want it to be a quarter of an inch thick um, there you go it's just that easy so now that's the flange um, I'm going to start with a new sketch we can right click in space new sketch click right on the face so easy it's unbelievable and we're going to put a circle right in the middle of this thing and this is this is the part the bit that's going to sort of house the oops that was a mistake so just say cancel re-click the circle i'm grabbing the middle of that line and i hope you can see the dotted lines that go uh across and that puts the circle right on center and one more time there we go and it's gonna be a one and a half inch circle and right click in space finish 2d sketch there you go couldn't be easier we're going to extrude this and i happen to know that i want to make that 187 point one eight seven five and good so in terms of tolerances you want to make everything as exact as you possibly can um, and generally i make things in the model what i want them to be um, uh, not what they might be after you get a machine part or something like that um, and and having that philosophy makes a lot of things uh, easier later on we're going to create another sketch I'll put it right on the center here I'm going to put in a circle and um, uh, 1.125 is the outside diameter the bearing now uh, I'm gonna really want I really want it this dimension actually plus a thousandth of an inch right uh, in the drawing but this is the, the ideal dimension and, and that's what I put in there um, say okay and how we're gonna handle this we're gonna extrude it again so we finish the sketch uh, we're gonna extrude click on that we're gonna choose cut and um, we're going to make this uh, 0.3125 deep. There we go. Not too shabby. And then we're going to do something. Now we could just, uh, there's going to be a through hole here, uh, uh, 875 through hole that goes all the way through. Uh, so you can put a shaft through your bearing or whatever. Um, and there's a couple of different strategies, and we're going to use a different strategy. We're going to actually make that a hole. Um, um, just to, just to demonstrate it. Um, so uh, how do we do that? We right click in space, we pick up sketch, we pick that point. So you put a hole on these points here. It's no more difficult than that. You say OK, finish 2D sketch, grab your hole command, through all is important and then uh, 0.875 so through all is important because when you if you put a whole note in the in a drawing later on um, and you have this just some super long distance then that super long distance will go into your drawing so there you go that's a easy way to make a hole so now we're going to add some uh, fillets and some chamfers um, we're going to change this dimension here to a quarter inch. We're going to grab the corners. One. Two. Three. Four. Say okay. 
So uh, now I want to put in, um, I'm going to grab another sketch again. Do it, try and do it a little different each time. Just uh, and I want to put in four holes. One, and I happen to have the centers of these radiuses to pick from. And it just makes life really easy. And uh, so those are where my holes are going to go. I right click in space, I finish the sketch. I click on hole. We want these to be I want it to be a countersink. I want this to be 0 0.385, 82 degrees. I want this to be 0 0.201, which is a is a, 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 a very clear fit for a number 10 screw. But it also happens to be the tap drill for a quarter 20, so I do a lot of 201 holes because it just covers all, you know, less, you need less tools. So, with that said, that's all said and done. We've got our four holes right in place, just the way we like them. We're going to do some chamfering, clean up the edges. So we're going to make our chamfers 30 thousandths. And we're going to select some edges. We're going to select that edge, that edge, that edge, that edge, that edge, and that edge. Is that good? Yeah, that's just right. I'm going to say okay. So now, whoops. I make an error? Yeah, I threw a chamfer in here and I didn't want that. So, say done. I'm going to go back. We're going to edit. Edit feature. So, uh, I push down the shift key, click on that, it goes away. And then I'm going to put one right there where I want it. And I'll be a little more careful this time and revolve it around. Yeah, everything looks as it should be. So then we say, okay. And um, now we're going to put in a radius fillet. We're going to make this fillet 20 thousandths of an inch because I happen to have an end mill that'll do that nicely. We're going to put that right in there, um, you know, mostly just for aesthetic reasons. Let's say okay. And then one more chamfer on the back here. And I'm going to make these chamfers a little smaller. Go to 20 thousandths, and that's just a well, it's really just deburring to be honest with you. Um, but we can do it right in the milling machine and have a nice part without a lot of effort. So, there we go. Um, so the, the edges have all been hit with a chamfer tool, uh, and basically, you know, that's what it takes to make a model right there. We um, actually snuck up on myself and finished it before I was ready. Um, which is a good thing. Um, you can see how simple and how effective that is. Um, it, it's a great tool for organizing your thoughts. You know, I, I started out uh, in the day and age when you made drawings on paper. So, um, so there you go. Uh, this is the end of our first video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, I'm going to save this before I go away. Click save. It's going into the right path here, and I'm going to call this one R8 Bearing Fledge 3. There you go. We got a lot of them. A lot of models of bearing flanges. Um, good. Thank you very much for watching our video.